Okay, after uh, we turn on the main disconnect, um, we'll hit the power on button for the control to start booting up. And it, it takes a little bit of time uh, for it to go through the boot up process. Once it's completed, you'll get this screen here. Then uh, what you'll end up doing is, is you gotta press this maintenance display button down the lower corner. And it'll take you into what we call the, the what I'm gonna call the Funuk G code side, the control. Once we're here, um, it's gonna give you a prompt to press in the e-stop and release, and then hit the, the uh, power on button again, and it goes through a reset procedure. And then once that's completed, you'll get this message, uh, which is fine. It's not an alarm, it's just stating a message for you. Another feature uh, for the Clausing Multi-Turn XS machines is the use or availability to use uh, Fanuc's conversational programming, uh, which is called the Manual Guide Eye. So to get there, as long as I'm, they have the key on the, uh, what I'm going to call is the CNC side, which is going to use the G-code programming or the Manual Guide Eye conversational. So I have to select this key to open up the software. And then once I select in there, it, as you see the screen has changed, I can also go into the edit mode. Once I'm in there, I have icons that are selecting different items. Uh, for instance, OList opens up the directory that is in the control. So multiple programs that are being showcased in there. I, I'm gonna hit close. And then if I'm creating a brand new program, um, any editing I'm gonna do is through these three icons, which is the start, cycle, and end. So the start would open up the uh, starting menu for what we call the housekeeping to get your tool activated and ready to go in your spindle. And then the cycles are what you're gonna do with that tool. Once the uh, program is then done, the end icon will close it out. One of the items that we'll need to cover uh, for the manual guide is setting up your tools, uh, your tool calibration. And this is on the basis you haven't set them on the alpha side nor on the G-code side. This is strictly setting your tools on the manual guide eye. The first thing that be the safe thing to do is to activate tool zero. That cancels any tool offset that has been activated. So if we type in T00 in the block, EOB, insert, you'll see it's shown in the program there, and then hit cycle start. Of course, you would have to close your doors, but for demonstration purposes, I have a key in my door so I can keep it open. So I'm gonna hit cycle start, and up here it's gone to tool zero. So in this case, we'll be safer to do the tool calibration. I'm gonna uh, push the arrow keys until I find the work set. And so the first thing we wanna do, like setting tools on uh, the alpha side, is that we wanna set the work shift first. So I'm gonna hand wheel over. Uh, let's close that out, oh, jog. And then we're going to hand wheel over toward the part. Now, uh, one advantage to the alpha side is I can actually have the spindle running uh, with the doors open uh, for the sake of calibrating tools. On this side, I'll have, to, again, the doors would have to be closed. I'd have to go back into the manual or uh, manual data input and start the spindle. So let's do M3 and S of we'll say 400 and a buck insert and cycle start. Okay, now we're going to take a skim cut because if if your part just came in from a saw, the the uh, front end of that is going to be shaking pretty good because the saw didn't cut it correctly. If it was a 
closing saw, it would have been perfect, but if it's not, then we'll have to base it off. So we're going to come up here and get in there and just barely touch the face, and then we're going to face that part off or drew up the face. And again, you don't have to go all the way down across the face, but um, if it's a one-off, you may do it anyway. That way you don't have to come back with a facing cycle. Okay, so I backed um, X out, and then what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and shut off the spindle, which we can do by just hitting reset. And then we're gonna look for our work set go over to the Z and hit measure and our work coordinate target is going to be zero and then input and then input this so we see it zero out so the work shift has been set um, for the Z axis for part zero before we do the uh, setting the work shift one thing I do want to emphasize is that we have to select a master tool then that tool is the one that's going to be used to set part zero all the time. In continuation of our uh, developing the work or the tool offsets, um, after getting the work shift set, we're going to turn the OD to be able to get the X offset. Then the thing to keep in mind is that whatever tool we're setting in the work shift, it, you know, it's going to be our master tool. It's the one that's going to find part zero. So I'm going to take that same tool and now uh, calibrate the X offset with it. So first thing I'm going to do is get the uh, spindle running so I can take a skim cut on the OD. So we'll do MDI and then do M3 again and S, let's say 400 RPM and the block, EOB, insert, they put it in the MDI program, and then we're gonna hit cycle start. Then, I'm gonna go ahead and take a skim cut on that diameter. Slow down the movement. So all we're concerned with is just truing up the, the diameter. Now obviously if you just put a part in the chuck, it, it could be running out quite a bit. And we're truing it up just for the sake of measuring 180 degrees apart. Once it's done, then I can go ahead and hit reset to stop the spin. Okay, then I'll get out my trusty little digitals and measure the part. And basically I, what I've got on the diameter is 4.39. So I'm going to find my tool offsets. And for the X, I will have measure and then 4.39 and then input. I could just go right to the straight to this input and then it would do the calculation. Now the display does not change yet because it won't change until I actually activate that tool offset. The other thing that uh, we have to do is we have to put in the, what the tool nose radius is. In this case the tool nose radius is going to be 31 thousandths and then the tool vector code um, and again the layout for this tool is number three. So I hit that and it put the three in there because it's, that's the layout that we're achieving. The next thing that we have to do with this is that we, we keep going uh, over. Right now we're in the where screen. We'll hit that again, the tab, and then we're in the tool data. 
So this tool is going to be a general and it's going to be number seven. Again, based off of that layout. So seven input. And then my cut angle is going to be basically from the diameter of the part and over to the, the uh, nose angle that's over here for clearance. So that'd be 90 plus three degrees would do 93 and they are typical to three to five degrees in addition to 90 and then the next thing is the nose angle and then again that tool this master tool is going to be an 80 degree diamond so once we get tool number one done we're going to go on to other tools that we may have uh, or may need to produce the component so um, we're going to get, go back into the tool offsets and I'm going to index to the next tool. Now I don't have to call up the tool because I'm still at tool zero, which I did on the first tool. Just, just to make sure no offsets are at being active at this point. What I'm going to do is, is uh, I'm going to highlight number two because that's where we're going to put the information. Have the um, MPG, manual pulse generators, or the jog mode active, and then move up to the part. And we're going to use paper again. Now, obviously, uh, for X, this may, may not be the most accurate, but it's going to get across the way we do things on this as far as um, setting tools. So I'm going to come up close, and then we'll slow that thing down and then just keep coming up to pinch the paper. Okay, so I just pinched it. Now I'll go ahead and uh, come over to Z, do measure, press the measure button, and then it's wanting to know what that target is, which with the paper thickness is theoretically two thousands. So I'll punch, punch that in there, press input, and then input here. So it shows five thousands, and that's the difference between tool number one, the master tool, and tool number two on the z-axis. That's how much the axis has uh, moved between the two to touch that same surface. Let's back the tool off in z, bring it x out. Then we're going to come in and touch off on the diameter. Okay, so I'm pinching the paper. The paper's not coming loose. Um, again, like I said, you could turn that and mic it again to, if you want to be uh, a bit more accurate with it. But um, the part, when I mic'd it before, was 4.39. What I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to type in uh, the measured value as 4.394 based off of, you know, two thousandths on the paper uh, thickness, both front and back of the part. Uh, so diameter wise, it'd be four thousandths. Get that in there, input and then input again. And a, and a calibrated number then will go in. The other thing that we want to do is uh, for the tunnel's radius. Again, this one is a 31 thousandths radius. And the virtual tip is going to be number three again, because that's the way it, it's uh, lined up on the, toward the part. And then we're going to go to the tab and go over to the tool data. And for tool number two, it's still a general tool. And it's still going to be number seven. So the number is below the actual shape of the tool. So number seven. And then we're coming over, arrowing over to the next bit of information. And it's still going to be 90 plus three degree relief. And then um, in this case, it's going to be a 35 degree di diamond tool. And you should be able to see that through 
the other camera. Um, so that's what it's set up as. Now, what it does with this information, it takes from a 180 degree plane, it takes the 93 plus the 35 and knows what your backside clearance is gonna be for that tool. It uses that just so you don't plow the tool into the side of the part. Another example of uh, tool offsets would be for a grooving tool. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is index around to the uh, grooving tool, uh, which is already there. And then I will um, come up to the part. And we will use, again, paper to pinch off uh, the part. And then once it's uh, pinched, then we will go to the tool offsets. And we're going to go down to tool number three and to the Z. And we're going to hit measure of 0 0.002, input and input. So the Z axis is offset is now set. Now we're going to go into the X. And again, we're going to come around to the OD and um, the measured diameter that I uh, had gotten before um, I'm going to type that in plus 4.390. Uh, I'm also adding in four uh, thousands for the thickness of the paper. So input and input. And so that tool uh, is offsets are now set. Uh, there is no radius on this tool. Uh, and sometimes you could. And if you're going to do O-ring groove, uh, grooves and stuff like that, you may want a radius to uh, contour it. This, in this case, it's like this one. It doesn't have a radius on it. The tool vector could still be uh, inputted, and that's number three, because we are qualifying off the left side of the tool. And then to the tool data, we're going to activate the groove tool. And again, number seven, because based off this layout. And the width of the tool tip, in this case is about an eighth inch. Um, I think it's 156 on the tool I have in there, so 0.156. And then um, the length of the tool is sticking out. And that's about 200 thousandths from the shank. And of course, the control also uses this to uh, stop you from uh, hitting the shank into the part. Continuing on with the uh, tool offset setup, uh, we're going to go down to tool number four because we're going to set up a threading tool at this point. And again, we're going to rotate around until my threading tool comes up. And we're going to come up and touch the side of the uh, tool to the uh, face of the part. So um, we'll come in a little bit with X and come over with Z. And we're touching the face. And so again, uh, this one really doesn't need to be uh, critical because it, it's cutting a thread in the uh, length. So I'm going to put in there again, I can go in there, you know, 0 0.002. Oops. I'll cancel that and press measure first and then 0 0.002 input and input. 
So we've got 13 thousandths difference between the thread tool and the uh, master tool. Now the reason I pick off the, the touch off the side of the tool because I, I don't care where the point's at. The, because the side of the tool is what's going to hit a wall first. So uh, the point is just going to trail behind it. So that, I'm not concerned about where that point is at, about trying to calibrate that. The only way that uh, I'm going to calibrate the point would be off the diameter. So again, we'll... we'll uh, Come around to the diameter, bring in the tool tip until it pinches the paper and um, hit the measure button on the X coordinate. So it was uh, 4.390, and I'm going to add the four thousandths to it, input, input. Okay, so X and Z are done. And again, there's no tool nose radius, so we're not going to deal with that. The uh, tool tip vector doesn't necessarily matter with this, but we can still go in with number three. And then uh, the tool data, we're going to set up with a threading tool. And again, number seven is the one we want. And what this is asking for is the included angle of the thread tool, of the, uh, the actual taper of the threading tool. And uh, basically, most cases, it's going to be a 60 degree included angle. So that's what we're going to put in there. So it uses that also to help in uh, knowing what, when it's coming down one flank, on, it'll split that in half and come down the one side of the thread as it's threading. So um, this, that was it for the threading tool at this point. Okay, the, the one of the last ones that we're gonna cover uh, is a boring bar, yeah, because that, that is used quite a bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is get, show an example of it uh, up here so it would be easier to see. So when we calibrate the x-axis, we're gonna be Touching off, you know, you got to have that drilled out first. You have to have a, you know, whether it's off the tailstock or off a tool post, you want to pre-drill your part. Then take a skim cut with your boring bar. And then when you come back out, don't move X. And then mic what the idea is. And that'll be the value that we put into the measure unit for the X axis. And Z will be the same. It'll come in and touch off the face of the part as, as the other tool tools do. Now for the tool data, um, let's go over to the data screen and it is still a general tool. Uh, even though it's a boring bar, it's still set up as a general. And then the, what's going to change though is your set tool. And it's going to be number six as we hopefully see on screen. Uh, for a boring bar like this. So let's put a number six in there. The layout of the insert is still the same. It's gonna be 93 degrees for off the surface in here and also uh, 80 degree diamond for the values put in here. Now, one thing I did uh, bypass is the tool nose radius. We still wanna put in tool nose radius and that will be 31 thousandths. And then the tool tip, the virtual tip uh, code uh, for this, because it, the insert is pointing back at us, it's going to be number two. Okay? So that was an example of, of a boring bar holder. But any ID tool uh, is still going to have to be touched off the ID of the hole at whatever diameter that's at and also off the face and you're going to calibrate according to those two surfaces. One other item uh, is setting up a drill. Um, of course, when you're touching off, whether you use it on a tool post uh, like this, a quick change tool post, 
or if you got a turret. Um, the turret, it's going to be lined up because when we send them out, the turret has been trammed in for center line of boring bar holder and where the drill's going to go. So it will be in line to this spindle center. But on a tool post, we have to pick that up we, uh, as the operator because these tool posts are adjustable. The, the tool posts can be sliding in and out. But so you load the tool. For Z, you'll come up and touch the face like you did all the other tools. And then you would again do your, um, let's get back to that uh, tool setting. And let's say that's tool number six. But again, you'd be touching off Z and, and do uh, Z zero. As far as the X, you would have to put a mag base on the chuck with an indicator coming out to the, let's say the best place possible and sweep around the drill until it's zero all the way around it, okay? You can also do the inside of the um, holder, you know, because that'll be a smooth surface also. But what we need to do is sweep that around, move the next in and out and, and, and the height on this thing up and down to get that drill center to the chuck. And with, by putting a mag base on it, you'll be able to do that. Once we have that set, we're not going to worry about the radius. Uh, if you want to see the drill in simulation on the manual guide eye, you could put a radius of the drill bit. That way it sh actually shows up. Um, virtual tip, don't need it. Uh, it'll be a zero or nine. And uh, for the tool itself, well, we, we don't have a drill call out on these icons, but if I step over one, then I have drill or flat end mill, because uh, so, those will all be set up the same way, or a tap or reamer. So if I select drill, then I'll come to this, and you're basically going to only have four choices. So number two is the one that will match this up, and then uh, what your uh, drill point is. And, and it can be 135 or 118, somewhere around there. So it all depends on the manufacturer of that drill. So that should get you on center uh, for the X offset because when you do the X offset, once you sweep it in, you're going to measure it at X zero. Mm -hmm.